buy a pair than to look for a pair. Think I'm going to buy another pair of pliers. Kind of. Think my wife's going to buy another pair of shoes. Kind of. Buy things. See, you want to have a vibrant society? Let me tell you what you got to have. You got to have the basics of life so low that you got a big old cushion there to buy things because that's what stimulates an economy because economies in both Canada and the United States are composed 70% of this. Buying crap. And I don't mean it in a bad sense. Just things that are beyond feeding you and putting a roof over your head. Gee, do you think I can afford a new Sear 15 air conditioner on my home? Maybe you can talk me into it. Because I'm sure not buying it for food. Maybe booze, but not food. Okay? Folks, understand, the second largest economy in the world today is Japan. China will probably be officially recognized as the second largest economy in the world this year. But Japan officially last year, second largest economy in the world. Second largest economy in the world, it's 62%. And in Europe, it is 68%. In the world, it is 92%. And in Zimbabwe, the most indebted nation on the planet, it's 115%. At 115%, you're not living. You are, in fact, what? Dying. And you don't have a vibrant economy. And we got the lowest, the lowest ever in the history of keeping records. And that's important. Because let me tell you about this economy real quick here in the United States. The first quarter of this year, first quarter of this year, we became the world's first $15 trillion economy. We became the world's first $1 trillion economy in 1970. Every 2.55 years since then, we've added what? Another trillion. We added this last trillion coming off of the worst recession we've been in since 1937 in 18 months. In fact, there's only one time period that we added it faster. In 1992 to 1993, we added it in 13 months. And I know you're sitting there going, now wait a minute, I saw that the growth rate was just 2.7% and it's gonna be less than 2% this year. I'm just telling you, it beat the average. And we came off the worst recession that we've had since 1937. Okay. Oh, incidentally, Canada will grow at 3% this year and they'll reach almost a $2 trillion economy. Phenomenal. But wait a minute, now you know you're sitting there going, yeah, but this debt is just killing this guy, it's just killing. Well, wait a minute, you gotta dig a little deeper. Look at North Dakota, okay? okay. 60 year olds can do algebra pretty good. Look a little deeper. Debt means nothing without comparing it to something, right? There's some of you go to the bank today and get a million dollars, wouldn't even, wouldn't even affect you. I can't get a car loan. <laughs> So debt, I don't like debt, but you gotta put debt in perspective. So let's put it in perspective, okay? CIA incidentally hires more economists and has for 30 years than any place on the planet, okay? Don't ask them why, they'd have to kill you. But the CIA for 30 years has hired more economists than anybody. And go to their website, it's very user friendly, and you'll find an interesting set of numbers that they've done for all the nations in the world. They've compared debt to their gross domestic product. In other words, your capacity to produce it, okay? 2010. United States was number 32 on the list. Okay. The number one most indebted country, Zimbabwe, 226%. Okay. Ours was number 32 on the list at 62%. Okay. Hmm. Second most indebted country on the planet at 224%? Japan. Nobody talks about Japan being in trouble. They're not. Oh, the stock market the last few weeks has just gone crazy over what? Ireland's debt. Ireland is four and a half million people. Greece is a nation of 10 million. Their debt is an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Not making light of it, I'm just telling you, put it in perspective. Okay? I don't like the fact that we owe $14 trillion to ourselves and the rest of the world, but wait a minute. Number 32 on the list. Wait a minute, what matters is something else. We owe 14 trillion bucks to ourselves and the rest of the world. But wait a minute, what's the net worth of our 120 million households? $62 trillion. 
Are you with me? We owe 14 trillion to ourselves and the rest of the world. And don't let anybody tell you can or, or China has all of it. They have a paltry one trillion of it. Nothing. Okay. Okay. We owe 14 trillion. We got a net worth of 62 trillion, meaning for every dollar of debt we have, we got four dollars and twenty-eight cents to pay it. You Canadians are number 15 on the list. Even though you're the strongest economy in North America right now, because you're going to grow at 3%, you owe yourselves and the rest of the world about a trillion. But your 11 million households have a collective net worth of 6 trillion. So for every dollar you owe the world and yourselves, you got six to pay it. We're number two, we got $4.28 to pay it. Japan, incidentally, has a dollar and 12 cents. Europe has a dollar and 80. Put it in perspective. I'm not making light of it, I'm just telling you. It ain't bad, okay? So, but wait a minute, let me give you one more set of numbers real quick. Last two quarters, because you're in the room. Last two quarters, American and Canadian businesses have kicked out the largest profits ever in the history of keeping records. The last two quarters, did you hear me? Most profitable ever in keeping records. American and Canadian businesses are sitting on the largest cash reserve they've ever had in history. Oh, and by the way, our American households are sitting on the largest cash reserve they've ever had, 10 trillion. Wait a minute, our households and our businesses have more cash than at any time in history. Our businesses are more profitable than any time in history. We got enough money to pay off debts and have a hell of a party. I tell students to read history, not to remember when George Washington was president or when Canada officially became an independent nation from the crown of England. You do not read history to get meaningless facts. You read history to be an optimist. Folks, come on. Let's go back just a second. World War I, tough. We were a nation of 100 million people. By the time World War I got being done, we had lost 118,000 people, died, soldiers, World War I. Canada was a country of 8 million people, and they lost over 60,000. You understand what I just told you? On a per capita basis, for every American soldier that lost their life in World War I, there were almost six Canadians that lost theirs. Then we both went through a Great Depression. And we came out of that Great Depression and had to face another Second World War, okay? By the time the Second World War had been done, we had lost 405,000 Americans and Canada had lost over 100,000. For every American that lost their life in World War II, almost two Canadians lost theirs. And then we had my generation's war, Vietnam, 58,218 names on that wonderful wall in Washington, D.C. Korea, the silent war, 38,000. 600 Canadians gave their life for the Korean conflict. 700 lives in Vietnam, although it wasn't their fight. And then the first desert storm claimed 226 American lives. And to date, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan have claimed 9,013. Tragic, all of them. Had a Great Depression and 15 recessions. And we became the world's largest economy, 15 trillion. And Canada will kick out too. And the standards to live in both countries are the lowest ever in the history of keeping records. I'd say, don't bet against us. Well, let's talk about the future, folks, for just a few minutes, because that's where I don't know if any, maybe you got this one in my last PowerPoint to you tonight. Maybe you got it in a psychology class or a marketing class. Abraham Maslow, he talked about Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. Anybody remember that? I remember the first time I heard this in college thinking, is this crap going to be on the test? I mean, oh yeah, whoopee, people go through stages in their life. But old Maslow proved to be pretty smart because Maslow said this, at the very base, what are humans going to do? It's culturally neutral. Texans do it just as quickly as Vietnamese do it, okay? Culturally neutral. Everybody does. Very base what? 
For my father's generation, incidentally, grew up Great Depression, World War II. Basic what? Put food in your belly, make sure somebody's not stealing it from you, 